What do you get when you bring writers together for some fun and games? Writers Virtual Table Hello and welcome to another episode of Writer Virtual Table. I am your host, Casey Bell, and again, we have some more writers with us today to play some games. First up is Jennifer Gordon. Jennifer, please introduce yourself to the audience. Hey, everybody. Thank you, Casey, for having me. Uh, I am Jennifer Ann Gordon. I am a gothic literary horror novelist from New Hampshire. And uh, the first book I published was a couple years ago, and it was called Beautiful, Frightening, and Silent. And that book went on to win the Kindle Award for Best Horror Novel of 2020. Uh, it also won the Authors on the Air Award for Best Horror Novel for 2020 as well, and was a finalist in a few other different uh, writing contests. And that book was originally with a small press, uh, but then due to circumstances beyond my control, I decided that I would rather have a little bit more control over what was happening with that book. So I ended up getting out of my contract and deciding to self-publish it and kind of relaunch it on my own. So that was my original journey into, into publishing. Awesome. Thank you. Next up is Terry. Hey, Casey. Thanks a lot for having us on. I'm Terry Shepard, and I write uh, detective thrillers starring uh, female protagonists. And I also stumbled into uh, writing kids stuff. I have a book out called Juliet and the Mystery Bug which uh, teaches kids how to protect themselves against pandemics like COVID-19. That's um, uh, it's nothing that I intended to do, but my grandkids started asking questions about this horrible thing and it became a thing. And now it's in doctor's offices across the country and has become kind of a Dr. Seuss-esque classic. Chasing Vega is going to be followed later this month by Chasing the Captain, the second in the Jessica Ramirez series. She ends up in London and Moscow, primarily because for some reason, Jessica has developed a fan base over there, over there in Great Britain, and they demanded that I bring her over there for a story. I publish through uh, Amazon, through KDP. So I am, uh, I'm an indie publisher. I own my own publishing company, Ramirez and Clark, and uh, it owns the copyrights to all my works and um, is the, pays all the taxes. Thank you. And Jim. Hi, I'm Jim Christina. I'm a, I'm a writer of Western novels. I've got uh, 13, well, actually, no, 15, I guess, if you count my book of poetry. I've got, um, I started writing in 2008 uh, with a character that just popped into my head 10 years before. And um, he just became uh, part of my life. And uh, there's actually 12 books written about this particular character. Terry, you've read one. Um, Still Waters, that'd be The Hunter and uh, Jeff Stryker. And um, I do, uh, we also have a um, little publishing company, Black Dog Publishing. Our imprint is Tuscany Bay Books. Uh, we've had, uh, and I also have a radio show Thursday nights, uh, The Writer's Block on LA Talk Radio. And uh, we've got, uh, geez, we've had uh, a lot of people on there. Jennifer, you've been on. and Terry, you have not been on. How did you, how did you miss out? <laughs> But uh, Casey, I want to thank you for letting me come in and join your little party today. It's uh, I, I understand from other writers, it's going to be a lot of fun. So, Yes, that's what everyone has said so far. Thank you all for joining me. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this message. On an almost uninhabitable rocky island off the coast of Maine, a hotel looms over the shore, an ever-present gray lady that stands strong like a guard keeping watch. For many who come here, this island is a sanctuary and a betrayal. This is a place where memories linger like ghosts, and the ephemeral nature of time begins to peel away, like the sanity of all who have been unlucky enough to step foot on its shore. From Daylight to Madness by Jennifer Gordon For more information go to jenniferangordon.com And we are back. All right. So now, Terry, you are going to ask Jen a question. Jennifer, my 
question for you is this. If Beautiful, Frightening, and Silent became a graphic novel, how would you change the story to fit that format? Oh, um, you know, Terry, I don't think I would change it very much to fit the format uh, because I originally thought of it as a graphic novel. So in my head, it, it, it's, it's still very visual. And I think you, you've read Beautiful, Frightening, and Silent, and you know that it's an incredibly visual book. So I think it would translate really well. I think the only thing I would have to kind of, I don't want to say change, but for the first half of the novel, when the ghost speaks, she speaks in kind of free verse poetry. And instead of doing that as sequential art, I would kind of want those words to be there with maybe like a, a painting, like watercolor or something like that, more like Neil Gaiman Sandman-esque a little bit. So keep her parts still very kind of um, ethereal and different from the rest until she, you know, until something happens in the middle of the book. When <laughs> So I, I, I don't think I would have to change it very much. I would love to see it as a graphic novel. I want but this so bad someday. Someday it'll happen. Thank you. Jim, it's your turn to ask Terry a question. Terry, uh, as a publisher of, and a writer of children's books, what do you feel is the best genre to get into as far as do we like monsters? Do we like um, uh, self-help for children to, uh, to learn how to be themselves? Um, give me an idea of what you think that children's books should be. I love to sneak the message in when they're not listening or not thinking that okay. there. So what I do in, uh, I'm, I'm working right now on a collaboration with another author and we're going to create a, an essence, a Nancy Drew series for younger, for younger girls that are in elementary school with a group. So it's not just one, but it's going to be four, very diverse, very different. Um, but what in our, in our practice sessions, Jim, when we've, written some test stuff uh -huh. we do is we teach a little bit of science like okay. like police science police procedures like the first one uh, a baseball breaks a window in a classroom and that turns out to be the key to solving a mystery later on but we also teach things about collaboration and about how everybody brings their own gift to the table and how we all work better together than we can as individuals. So I'm hoping that that will become a series with dozens of things and it'll end up on bookshelves and be a favorite. Excellent. Thank you. And Jennifer, it's your turn to ask Jim a question. So Jim, you are an author of Western novels. I am. In the past few years, really, there have been a lot of different Western kind of hybrid novels where it's like horror Western, splatter punk, punk Western, dystopian Western, fantasy Western. Do you ever see yourself kind of branching into cross genre with your Westerns or and, and if not, is like, how do you feel about like the classic Western too? Like, I try to keep my, my Westerns not classic, but I try to keep them as realistic as I can. Um, I'm not a big fan. I, I love Louis L'Amour's stories, but I don't love his characters. I, I his, you know, um, because people back in the 1860s, 1870s, 1880s, they weren't all six feet tall, wide shoulder, narrow hip, square jaw. Never went to the bathroom, never got dirty, um, you know, never fed their horse. That's just not real life. And so I try to keep my characters in my books real life. And because they are, they, my books tend to get a little bit gritty, as Terry will attest. Um, as far as busting out of a genre of pure Western, I did a series, not a series, but a, a dual novel called The Return. And it is a, 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 a paranormal, a paranormal story mm -hmm. of sorts. It is, uh, it's about a demon that takes the, the bodies of fallen preachers. And what better target could a demon have than a preacher who's lost his faith? And um, they, they go from, you know, from uh, Alabama to Arizona. And then when, when the demon is released from this one body, um, he turns up in another body in mm -hmm. um, Louisiana. And the same characters, uh, Stryker and the Hunter, are and are, are after him there because of the uh, the character of Bountiful Jim, that is works on the Hunter's Ranch. Uh, it's his cousin, 
that is in trouble in Louisiana. So they take off to go help them there. But the second part of this book, the, the actual story called The Return, the first one is The Dark Angel. This, the Return gets, oh, I, I, I guess, very supernatural in that we have shapeshifters and um, the, the demon, the preacher he calls himself, can, can transform himself into a raven. And just a huge raven, but he has big, huge yellow eyes. So if you look, if you look up the cover of the return, you'll see on the cover it's a blue sky with a big black raven and yellow eyes on it. So that's I I I hope I answered your question, Jennifer. You did, and now I'm definitely going to look that up because I'm a sucker for anything with a raven. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. It is now time for the next section. Judge a book by its cover. I'm going to show you a book cover and you only have 30 seconds to come up with a title, a main character, a plot and a genre. And you can, you know, if you have pen and paper, write it down. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this message. Jessica Ramirez is based on a real life Latina cop. She's surrounded by an ensemble cast of fascinating characters all with ties to real people. I wanted the audience to read the story and say to themselves, yeah, that hero could be me. The time is up. Jim, what is this book? Um, my title is Return to the Lamp. And the main character is a uh, it's a six it's a sixth century genie that is out of the lamp and she's trying to get back in because of the way she's treated, um, and the way she's being used by people because of her powers of, to grant them wishes. Um, he, she's being passed back and forth, and she's trying desperately to get back into her into her lamp. Awesome. What genre would you consider that? Oh, I would consider it um, <sighs> paranormal, I guess, possibly. Cool. Not Go ahead. Jennifer, what Let is me, the book? Oh, sorry, I didn't hear my name. Um, oh my. I have it called The Elixir, and it is literary horror, and it is a modern day take on the Elizabeth Bathory legend. Uh, the Elizabeth Bathory legend was this was about a woman who bathed in the blood of babies and virgins in order to maintain her youthful appearance. But in this version, uh, it is a CEO of a wine corporation and she's mixing this baby blood into the wine and selling it to women all over the world for them to remain useful so it's literary horror with a little pinch of satire and terry what is this book this book is called the kool-aid murders and it's about a kid <laughs> who was bullied as, as a youngster in his uh, Sunday school class, they made him drink grape kool-aid even though they knew that he hated grapes and so as an adult he went to find everyone that was in that chain of command at his Sunday school and murder them one by one. And his best friend grew up to be a police officer and he's the detective who has to figure out who did this and why. I would read that. <laughs> yeah. I would wait for the picture to bust through the wall and go, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought about Jim. That's exactly what I thought about. You're probably too young for that, Casey. Do you remember that commercial? <laughs> <laughs> Which one now? For Kool Aid. Kool -Aid, Kool -Aid man. The Kool Aid Man, yes. Yeah. yeah. I used yeah. to play the Kool Aid Man video game, and he was like in a haunted house for some reason. Well, the, if it's in a haunted house, it was Miss Scarlet with a knife in, in, the, in the, the kitchen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she killed Colonel Mustard. <laughs> I never heard of the Kool Aid video game, though but I have seen the commercials for Kool-Aid, <laughs> um, which they don't have anymore, I guess. All right, so our next section is who is that character? I'm going to show you a name and you have to tell me what title is this character of the book in, the plot of the book and the genre. Hold on for a moment. Severely limited by the loss of a leg at 10 years old, Jefferson Greeley's dream is to become Texas Ranger yet is stopped because of his missing leg. Enlisting the assistance of Thomas Griffith, Jefferson gets another chance after Griffith designs a new leg, one capable of acting like a normal leg. Jefferson's Chance by Jim Christina 
For more information, go to jimchristina.net. And we are back. Jennifer, who is Frio Minter? Oh, my goodness. Um, he is a man who was wrongly accused of a murder in the neighborhood where he lives in. He is a quiet gentleman, and everybody kind of thinks he's a little odd. The book would be historical fiction. It would take place in the 1960s. It would be told from the point of view of uh, the girl who was murder's best friend. So she always just sees this person kind of on the side, but everybody's petrified of him. So it's a little bit to kill a mockingbird meets the lovely bones. Cool. Terry, who is for you, Mentor? Real Mentor is the protagonist in a book called Motivational Mayhem. And it's about a bank robber who hides out in a motivational seminar and decides to change who he is to become one of them. So on the spot, he makes up the name Free El Mentor. He makes notes of what everybody says. And when somebody gets ill and they need somebody to replace at the last minute, he becomes that guy and becomes very famous and very rich until he is recognized by one of the bank tellers who points him out to the cops. And of course he is arrested. Wow. Wow. That's a lot in 30 seconds. <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> I know. I was like, wow, oh, that's fully Jim fleshed out. Who is Free El Mentor? Okay, Free El Mentor. Uh, Free El Mentor is a scout with Alzheimer in 1876. His name is not actually Free El Mentor. His name is actually Leslie Mentor. Um, he calls himself free because he hates the word Le Leslie. And he is, uh, he's one that, that taught uh, uh, um, Mickey Free and uh, Tom Horn to be scouts with Sieber. He is the protagonist in this particular story. And the name of the book is Scouting with Sieber. And he is, uh, he's killed off towards the end of the book. And uh, Tom Horn and uh, Mickey Free take over his duties totally. And he winds up with a plaque in the middle of Fort Apache that says, to free Leslie Mentor. That's just, the genre is, of course, Western. You know, this is one of my... Um, favorite games because every time I do we do this the same thing happens everyone sees the same picture but no one sees the same book and I think that's amazing All right, I want to thank my writers for joining me. Jim is going to go first in sharing his latest project, if he's working on anything at the moment. Jim? Uh, okay, my latest project that is completed is Jefferson's Chance, about a uh, young man who loses his leg at 10 years old to a rattlesnake bite, but he wants to be a Texas Ranger. And a, uh, a uh, uh, engineer that built the, uh, the uh, suspension bridge over the the Brazos River in Waco uh, offers to design him a leg that works just like a real leg, and it happens. Uh, and the book goes on from there. Uh, work I'm working on right now is a uh, working title is Ranger. It's about uh, a real Texas Ranger, uh, John Barkley um, Armstrong, who is uh, right now he's after this nefarious young man, and his name is Jonas M um, Miller, and he's a very bad guy that's traveling Central Texas. So that's what I'm working on right at the moment. Thank you. And Terry, same question. Well, I'm just about to publish Chasing the Captain, which is the follow-up to Chasing Vega. And in Chasing Vega, my protagonist, Jessica Ramirez, was banished from her little Illinois town and went to visit her uncle who worked in Paloma County, uh, in um, um, Poconino County in Arizona and covered the Grand Canyon. She had to chase a serial killer there. One guy got away, and that guy was the captain. So in this second book, she is on his trail, and it takes her from an electrocution she's witnessed 
an execution by an, an electric chair in Nashville, Tennessee, to London and to Moscow. And uh, all of the cast, the stars from the previous book make an appearance. So if you read Vega and enjoyed it, you'll love Chasing the Captain. The other thing that I'm very proud of that's coming out in September is, this, is the first in a series I'm calling Students in Time. And it's done in collaboration uh, with the core curriculum, history curriculum, for the fourth grade level. And a challenge that I learned when talking to teachers was it's very hard for them to get kids interested in Sir Walter Raleigh and Virginia Dare's baptism. So I created time travel and took two students and their history teacher and send them back into the time period that is being covered, which is from Sir Walter Raleigh through the end of the American Revolution. And they actually witness each lesson firsthand. They get to interview the people that are involved. And there's a little bit of adventure in it as well. And that will be coming out in September. Cool. Thank you. And of course, Jennifer. So I, um, currently I have a book that's coming out July 13th. It is on pre-sale now. It is called Pretty Ugly. Um, it is a literary horror novel with some dystopian uh, side action to it. It's the story of two very, very damaged, broken souls. One of them is an Instagram influencer and the other one is a failed politician. And it is a story about how they got to where they are in their life and how sometimes it takes the world ending for people to realize who they really want to be and the changes they need to make in their life. So it is a story about loss and loneliness and maybe even finding a way to love yourself and love somebody else um, while the world ends. It takes place in New Hampshire and in Boston, and it also takes place in Northern Italy. Um, and that part is a little bit based on the time that my husband and I were in Northern Italy and we tried to take a train across the country and we missed every single train possible and we didn't speak the language. Mm -hmm. And I thought, what if that happened when honestly the world was ending and there were barely any trains? And so there's like a little bit of train to Busan in there as well. So again, that's called Pretty Ugly. It's available for pre-order. Um, I'm working, I'm actively working. I'm like almost 60,000 words into a project I can't really talk about uh, because my agent would kill me if I mentioned it. Um, but I will, I can say that it is not horror and it is contemporary and uh, I'm very excited about it. So hopefully I'll be able to announce something at some point, but it, it's going to be top secret for a while. No worries. Thank you so much <laughs> all for sharing and thank you all for joining me I want to thank our writers, Jim and Terry and Jennifer, for taking the time to have fun with me on Writers Virtual Table. And of course, you, the audience, I want to thank you for taking the time to watch. Have a great day and have a great week.